After a heated debate yesterday, the Senate passed the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Under Section 52 of the bill passed by the Senate, the lawmakers effectively resolved the powers of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to determine how election results should be transmitted and transferred same to the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC. And legislators who are meant to be partisan are uh, participants during elections. However, it was not the same in the House of Representatives, as pandemonium ensued after the Deputy Speaker, Honorable Ahmed Idris Wase, ruled against a voice vote for the electronic transmission of results. The resulting chaos forced Speaker Femi Bajabiamila to take over this session and adjourn sitting to today to discuss the far-reaching implications of what transpired in the National Assembly and enlighten us on INS capacity to transmit results electronically. We're now being joined from our Abuja studio by the former director of uh, voter education of INEC, Wale Osaze Uzi. Good morning, Osaze Uzi, and welcome to the show. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Good morning. Well, I mean, the issues are very clear, as made out, uh, as stated in the introduction. Uh, can you help us make sense of what transpired yesterday in the Senate, particularly? Uh, is it an impossibility? Is it impossible uh, for the uh, Independent National Electoral Commission to do electron uh, electronic transmission of uh, results? And what do you make of the uh, resolution by Senate members uh, that uh, you know the NCC has to be involved, uh, the National Assembly has to be involved? In real terms, uh, what does that mean? Oh, thank you very much. I wish I could make legal sense of what the Senate did yesterday, but uh, I regret to say that I cannot. And I don't think any lawyer or any uh, person interested in our democracy can make sense of what they did. And it is um, incorrect. Without hearing from the Commission, it was incorrect of them to have jumped to the conclusion that um, INEC was not ready to do uh, electronic uh, transmission of results. Um, clause 52.3 was okay, but it's the proviso in that clause that really is the problem. And the proviso basically uh, says that uh, before you do uh, transmission, INEC should consult with the NCC, Nigerian Communications Commission, and uh, get the approval of the Senate, so to, of the National Assembly, so to do. Now, I think uh, there's no other way to put it, but plainly it is unconstitutional. It is void. Uh, you know, right, right away, I've been issued. Let's not, uh, I don't think anybody can justify that. Anybody can mean words about that. And some of those senators who voted the way they did actually know this. It's such that it's taking us round and round and round, taking us down the path which we have been through before. Uh, at the time that the, the, I think it was the Senate uh, Second uh, Assembly tried to uh, restrict the power, constitutional powers of INEC, INEC went to court, challenged them in court, and succeeded. And the case went on appeal. They were not satisfied. The case went on appeal. And uh, Oguntade, who uh, was then a justice of the court of appeal, used very strong words and said he would have done away with the 2003 elections if not for the for public policy considerations. He refused to set aside the, 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 the election so far then conducted because of the way the National Assembly behaved in trying to usurp the powers of the commission. Here it is. INEC is a constitutional body established by the Constitution, Section 153 of the Constitution. The National Assembly is all equally established by the same Constitution. So the same instrument that established you established INEC. Gave them and donated powers to you, gave powers and donated powers to INEC as well. You do not take and accept yours and then try to take all the powers donated by, 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 by yourself, taking powers that equally given to INEC. The power to superintend, to conduct, to supervise elections rests with the Commission, Section 78 of the 1999 Constitution as amended is very, very clear on that, on, that, on that point. Now, you are subjecting these powers to the powers of a body not known to the Constitution, a statutory body, not in that sense, an inferior body, because in the hierarchy of laws, the Constitution is superior and the body is it, it, it created. To amend the INEC uh, powers, for example, you have to go back to amendment of the Constitution. But the National Commission, Commission, wonderful body, does a fantastic job, but it's a creation of law. It is inferior in that sense because it's not created by the Constitution. It's not known to the Constitution in that, in that context that the, creation did, the Constitution did not create it. The Constitution gave the National Assembly powers to create it, which it did. And now you subject it, the body under the super, uh, superintendent of a minister who's appointed by the president, you now say INEC should now, as it were, 
consult these people, get permission from them before it discharges its constitutional duty and responsibilities. And who says INEC cannot conduct, uh, uh, cannot uh, uh, transmit results? It has done so. It did so in Edo. It did so in Ondo. And it has been piloting these things in several by-elections, several elections. So I just, I just, sorry, I just cannot make sense of it. And again, don't forget, since 2015, for more than six years, six and a half years, INEC has been using the card reader. INEC uses the card reader in all the 123,000 odd polling units that existed then. INEC has been consulting with the NCC, by the way. It has the power to, but it is its own discretion. And if you left to that discretion, whether it wants to consult with it, certainly not seek approval from it. In 2018, INEC and, uh, uh, worked with the, with, the, with the NCC. And we found out that um, only 8,000 out of 124,000 polling units were not effectively covered by any of the uh, telcos. Only 8,000, which represents a minute percentage. And they gave us data as of 2018 that 92% national coverage. They admittedly, there are some blind spots, and they told us that quite clearly. But it is such that on election day, the telcos told us that they could deploy uh, there and cover those on, on, on covered areas. So I'm sure that a number of the senators know this. Uh, maybe their voices were not heard. And uh, truly, it's a, it's a shocking thing, truly. It truly is. It clearly is a sinister attempt at hijacking INEX mandate. But can you tell us exactly what is the danger here for those pretending that they do not know what these kinds of moves portend? We saw the rowdy scenes yesterday at the National Assembly, which are just a little taste of what will happen if this kind of attempt is successful and the voices of Nigerians are stifled and those Nigerians then erupt in violence. Exactly what are we facing here with this kind of reckless behavior? Well, thank you. I think it's sinister. I don't think I can't use I can't find any other adjective to qualify what 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 is being done. Clearly sinister, clearly unconstitutional, and they, I think the senators who voted for that are in breach of their oaths of office. I I really do think so, because many of them know. Now you want to subject a power donated to INEC by the constitution. You want to constrain it. And that's where it starts, by the way. It's not just for this. If they get away with this, they will continue to do that. And they will, they will whittle down the powers of the commission in every, so many other ways. You know, already there are contentious issues like um, where elections are, uh, a returning officer makes a declaration under duress. That's part of the clause. And we're not even concentrating on those things. Now. And, and, and I think we should not lose focus of the board, not just in this transmission, but other important sections, clauses of the bill. And let me correct that. When it's a bill, you talk of clauses, you don't talk of sections. So clause 52 subs, clause 3 is what we talk about, not section 52, because it's not yet an act. It's when it becomes an act that you call them sections, the clause. Now, you don't put the proviso such as that because you are, you are, you are whittling away the powers of the commission. It starts with one step and it goes on and the cascade is a, it's a downhill roller coaster and just keeps going like that, like that, like that. That's the danger in the thing. And INEX says it's ready. You did not, INEX submitted a memo to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the National Assembly. It went for all the public hearings that they had. This issue did not come up. They did not ask INEC, are you ready? And in fact, on the contrary, there have been several engagements. Before this bill was passed, I think in 2020, in March or thereabouts, yeah, March 2020, INEC engaged National Assembly committees on INEC, both in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. This matter did not come up. And specifically, we told them that, look, these things are possible. We have been doing it, we have piloted it, and everybody was, was clearly uh, upbeat about it. And it was, it was a foregone conclusion. Mm. Bills were there. None of these bills then had this proviso. None of the constitution of these bills, earlier, earlier metamorphosis of these bills had this proviso. So why mm. bring it now? We have to watch out for it. I think the whole mm. Nigerians will rise up in condemnation of what, what, what they did. I mean, well, good to see you again. Uh, we're just speaking yesterday and uh, we're talking about this, how if Nigeria is ready, you know, for electronic transmission. And we did not know this was going to happen. I think this was happening when we were speaking here yesterday on another platform. And... This finally happened, Voila. Yes. And, and you're thinking to yourself that what is really, really happening? I mean, it's the arguments by some of the lawmakers. One was even saying that in my hometown, I used to riot. In my village, I used to riot. And I looked and I laughed. And some of them are making the argument for broadband penetration. And I wonder, I'm like, goodness me, is that the case now? They use their mobile phones. Do most Nigerians get internet via broadband? Is that supposed to be the conversation in the first place? I mean, what is really happening? And what should be INEC stands this morning? Uh, Femme Bujabi and Miller said INEC will come around this morning to the House of Representatives and uh, the NCC will come around to the House of Representatives. What should INEC push for this morning? Because the House of Representatives is still open. I mean, we saw the shambolic process yesterday.
Thank you, Rufai. It was really, I think as a word, it was really shambolic. Um, and it did grave injustice to, to the country. It was unpatriotic, selfish, and appeared that there was more loyalty to party and selfish and other interests than the loyalty to the constitution. That is contrary to their oaths of office. And we must tell them that. Um, we talked about this yesterday on another platform, I think, and there was overwhelming support for the increased use of technology. We acknowledge their limitations to technology. And when the card reader was being introduced, the same people who were rising in opposition to this now were the champions of card reader, champions of, of, of technology before its introduction, after its introduction. Now, why is this rollback? Six and a half years later, I thought we would have gone so far down this road that we should have done so much improvements. And I gave statistics of coverage as at 2018. Three and a half years later, I believe that it's wider coverage. And, well, so if, it's, if there's need for broadband, yes, there definitely is need for broadband penetration. If we must use Terraria or alternative means, then why don't you talk about funding for those alternative means if you insist that there's no other way? And the design that INEC has done is such that Wherever there is no service, wherever there is a black spot, immediately you get to where there is service, it picks up the data and transmits it. And that's exactly what happens with the card reader. We have successfully used the card reader in two general elections, successfully. So I, I, I just cannot understand it. Now, in exposition, I think it will be very clear. I've made allusions to that. I don't speak for the commission, but I expect the commission to stand on the side of Nigerians. Don't forget... INEC has been a champion of the increased use of technology, even with the inchoate uh, nature of the law, and even with the, with the opposition in old section 40, was it 59 or 51, that said uh, the electronic voting for now, time being, is banned. INEC still went ahead and said piloting things. In one sense, it, it, it went around the law, but acted within the law to provide for a biometric register, electronic register. It went for card reader, which is electronic. It, did, uh, it, it went for the, the, the PVC, permanent voters card, which contains an electronic chip, and it has been piloting, although it did not, because the law did not, as it were, allow it, it has been piloting transmission, collation of results, and the result viewing portal in Edo and Ondo that were so loaded. So it, I think and I expect it will stand firm to say you cannot do this. And in fact, the interesting thing, well, I would love to see what the NCC does, because the NCC has been engaging with the NEC, as I said, and it has, set, it has, it has prided itself with the, with the level of penetration that we've had and, the, and how far it's been expanded. We work with them, we work, uh, NEC work with them, NEC work with the telcos. All the major telcos, they work with them. So I wonder how they will be. But if they persist or insist on this, I don't even think the, the House of Reps should have invited NEC because these things are there, we put it for them for. But good thing, and they definitely a better uh, understanding and a better take than what the Senate did. So they, they, they led in that, in, that, in that regard. So well, it will be explained to them, but if they insist and if there's, a, there's no note, unity among the two houses and they insist on this thing, I expect INEC to go to court well, and challenge this. Note, and I expect CSOs and other people to go to court yes, and challenge this. Osaze Uzi, let us take a, a quick break. And after that break, the conversation will continue. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Morning Show. Here on the Arise News Channel, our guest is still the former director of voter education with the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC of Nigeria, Wale Osaze Uzi. Uh, Osaze Uzi, thank you very much for staying with us. Well, with all that you have said and that others have said in the media today, in the papers, do you think that the 2023 general election is already in jeopardy? Because as it looks... These uh, lawmakers who have voted along party lines, they will not change their mind. And there is no guarantee that the president of Nigeria, who is also, uh, you know, of the um, All Progressive Congress, whose members have uh, voted the way we saw in the Senate yesterday, uh, will go against his uh, party members. And then I would like you also to comment on campaign finance. We are all talking about electronic transmission of results. Yeah, another big issue has been campaign finance, and we've been follow, focusing on that. You now need 15 billion naira to be president of Nigeria, 5 billion naira to be, uh, you know, uh, governor in any state. To ordinary people like us, that's a lot of money. So where would that money come from? And how do we then weigh that against this uh, demand for competent people, you know, where many Nigerians who should be in... Uh, leadership positions. If you have 15 billion naira, 
It probably won't mean well for anybody. Yes, on the first part of your question, I expect the president to also live by his oath of office and his promises he has made to Nigerians that he will bequeath a good electoral system in the country. I expect him to be patriotic, and he cannot hide behind the anonymity of saying that the collective decision of my colleagues in the House or in the Senate, he cannot hide behind that. I expect that he would do the right thing and um, uphold the Constitution. And if they insist and persist in the path in which they have taken, that he should veto. He should veto the bill when it comes to him if these obnoxious clauses are in that bill. That is our expectation of our president. He has promised us severally, not just once. He has assured the commission privately. He has assured Nigerians publicly that he would uphold the law and would um, bequeath a good electoral system. So I expect that. I don't expect anything less from him. And I think he's above party politics. So we are watching. Nigerians are watching. But I still uh, hope that wisdom will prevail within the National Assembly. The House has not passed the bill, so it has an opportunity. Whether uh, What side of history it will decide to, to stick by. Whether it will stick by the Nigerian people for history will not absolve it if it chooses to go uh, another path. So there's still opportunity. There's still the conference between the two houses to reconcile uh, their respective positions of the bill. So there's still hope, there's still a way, but the pressure must be put on them and also on the uh, president. Campaign finance, big issue. Well, let's, let's clear one aspect. What the law, as I understand it, is saying is that the maximum a person should spend, it doesn't say that's the minimum, it doesn't say that they must spend this amount of money. I'm hoping that uh, maybe it's idealistic, maybe it's utopian to expect that you can spend less and become president. Quite honestly, my personal view is that the, the present, I think it's 501 billion that is in the constitution. It's not, it's not, it's not uh, realistically, uh, you will spend maybe 10 times what the present law says you will spend. And we, let us take a more holistic view of this campaign finance. There are a couple of issues involved. One, this deals with campaign, the money that the candidates, not the political party, it is the money the candidate himself, his money that he spends between the date notice of election is given by the commission, by ANEC, up to election day. So it does not include pre-nomination expenditure. All the money he spends prior to his nomination by his political party. So if he goes donating to mosques, donating to uh, churches, donating to charitable organizations, if his trust goes donating for name recognition or for other purposes, that does not account for it. Let's be clear. Companies cannot donate to political causes. It is contrary to the Companies and Allied Matters Act. Uh, I think it's just been amended in 2020. It is contrary to that act for any company to donate money to it. And the, the directors or directing officers of that company can go to jail or be fined heavily if they donate to political parties. Now, truly, this might be observed in the breach. But if, if, if all the organizations, responsible organizations, and um, the regulators, especially like companies and allies commissions, know what they are doing, when they file their annual returns, they show donations to, to political courses or to any candidates, then they should sanction those parties. It's difficult to, mean, uh, to, to, to really track these things, very difficult. But it's a license to spend money. I recall that the president himself said he didn't have enough money to buy um, even his nomination forms. As at the time that um, he first con uh, contested the election, I think in 2015 or thereabouts, and we're talking about 22 million. The person doesn't have 22 million, expecting to spend 15 billion. Obviously, there are different ways he's going to get that money. And um, there will be payback time if he wins that uh, election. And don't forget, no individual can donate more than 1 million naira. So you need a lot of Nigerians to raise 15, 10 billion, or however much. You want to spend. You need a lot of Nigerians to do that. It's illegal for any single individual to need more than one, one million naira. So how do you do that? We must not only look at campaign finance by the candidates. We should, and we're not talking so much about it, limitations to campaign finance by the political parties. The Godfathers, it's illegal for them to do so. I think we should look closely at implementation, even of the existing laws. There, there are lots of issues, and we shouldn't lose track of all. We must track each and every one. I think we'll divide ourselves such that Different groups we can't all just concentrate on transmission and other places. So as to your question, whether 2023 is in jeopardy, there are ominous, there are ominous uh, clouds gathering, ominous clouds gathering, and we should ensure we disperse those, the clouds before the gather and the storm starts. We should. Well, I see where your optimism 
about President Buhari vetoing this bill, if it comes to that, where it comes from. Because you recall in 2018, there were attempts by the Senate then to increase the um, upper limits of campaign finances to amend Section 91 of the Electoral Act. And the president denied that his, um, his assent because he said, constitutionally, INEC is empowered to decide on electoral matters. However, I have to ask you, it's clear that the senators and the reps from the ruling party are towing the party line. Who drew that party line? Where does that direction come from to go ahead and vote in this way? Well, I'm not a member of the Senate or the House. I don't know where it came about. It's not in public domain anyway. Um, so I cannot speculate as to how it came about. But it's, it's intriguing, though. It certainly it's intriguing because um, even some senators, don't forget the main sponsors of this bill, Senator Gaya and Senator Ovi Amagege, sponsored this bill initially when it first came for first second reading. And these proviso were not, was not in the bill. <laughs> it was not in the bill at that time. Senator Gaya is chairman of the Senate committee, if I'm not mistaken. His committee did not put this proviso in the bill. That was when presented. But I, I don't know how he voted. I've seen things on social media. It will appear he did not vote in favor of the bill. I really don't know. I, I, I hope I'm getting that wrong for his own sake and uh, for the sake of posterity. But, hey, posterity will not be kind on many of them. So I, I, I wonder, it's intriguing to know why and how. The chief whip must have really done his job or the party uh, hierarchy must have really done their job. But you do not... Um, your loyalty is to the Nigerian people. Your loyalty is to the Constitution. Your loyalty really is not to party. If the party asks you to do the wrong thing, well, I will, apart from leaving you to your conscience, we'll meet in court. <laughs> you know, that's anything I can say. I'm sorry, Senator Gaia is right there. He voted in favor of resorting to NCC and National <laughs> Assembly permission. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> I mean, uh, let's talk about electoral offenses. Uh, I, I think uh, a bill was pushed forward and uh, it has gone through, I think, the first house. And uh, that's a big sticking point. The, the challenge has always been INEC doesn't have a lot of lawyers to prosecute electoral offenses cases and the likes and things like that. Even with this campaign spend, the, the question will be who will be there to monitor? I mean, even if they say an uh, individual can just give one million naira. Who would be there to monitor that an individual is actually giving a million naira? Are we tracking their bank accounts? Are we doing all sorts? I mean, are we seeing uh, their, their transaction trail and the likes and things like that? I mean, let, let's talk through this electoral offenses bill. Yes, I think that's one of the most progressive bills that has been introduced in the, in the National Assembly for quite a while. Um, INEC has been calling for it. Civil society have been calling for it. Um, Justice Ways, as far back as Justice Ways, committee called for it. Lemus committee called for it. Namani uh, uh, committee called for it. So it's, 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 it's long overdue. Um, one thing is to have that bill passed and make it an act. The next thing is to give it some teeth and backing to ensure it does what its uh, Nigerians hope it does. Um, tracking will be a major, major challenge. Let's not deceive ourselves. Tra tracking is a major challenge, especially in a society where there's so much um, cash, utilization of cash, rather than other traceable means, uh, paper trails. It's, it's difficult to track cash, but not impossible. As you see the trial of uh, several the former INEC chairman, the former INEC uh, uh, officials, and some bankers and some other people for what they call the uh, alleged uh, Desiani um, money used in the 2015 election. So it can, it's not impossible to track. And I think that was what, what informed INEC collaborating with um, the EFCC and the um, ICPC. That, look, you have better resources, you are better able technically to track uh, movement of money. And um, there will always be money in politics, but it's the, it's the illegal money, the illegal inflow of money that we should bother about. Money coming from abroad, which the Constitution says cannot come. Money by companies, money by individuals exceeding limits and such like. Those are the kind of things that we, 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 we have to track. Um, some are obvious, and I think INEC, before I left, we're trying to do that, getting all electoral officers, because INEC has offices in all local governments of the country. They say, look, let's do, maybe not too scientific, but let's start something. Look at the uh, billboards put up. How much does it set up uh, to cost a billboard for three months, six months? How, count the number of billboards put up by, 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 by candidates. And this brings me to another issue about campaign finance. People tend to ignore it. Section 221 of the Constitution says no association other than a political party can donate to the 
post of any candidate or any political party. So only political parties can do it. And you see billboards or you see endorsements of XYZ campaign organization. That's an association. It has no power, no right to campaign for any candidate and to, 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 to contribute money or to collect money or contribute money. Absolutely not. It's illegal. It's unconstitutional. The, 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 the unfortunate thing is that this Electoral Act and Constitution does not prescribe a punishment for it. It says that it's illegal for, for, for associations. So you see social and so progressive union or social and so towns union, we, we vote for our son or we collect money for our son. That is illegal. It's unconstitutional. And I wish looking through uh, constitutional reform and electoral bill reform, that is one thing we should address and I think make a punishment for it. Tracking and ensuring implementation and reproduction of the law is going to be the next phase of the challenge and the struggle. And it's, it's important we get it right. Otherwise, it will be a dead, dead letter law. It will just be dead on paper, but people will be observing the breach of it and it, it will not help our system and our process. Well, thank you very much, Oluwale Osase Uzi, for joining us uh, this morning on The Morning Show and for helping us to gain a better understanding of the issues involved uh, with the electoral framework for elections. Thank you very much.